So Mike Bako is a sports editor at DailyNational.com. He joins us now live for more. Uh, Mike, we might not know what they decide, as you heard, until the early spring, but what do you think they should do? Well, what I think that they should do, what the world thinks that they should do, really doesn't matter when it comes down to the fact that they already have $15 billion invested in having these Olympics go off. And those numbers could probably be skewed a little bit higher considering that it was $15 billion when they were going to do it last summer before it was being postponed. So just keeping those facilities going, keeping them up to date, you're looking at probably closer to $20 billion already invested. Right now, it's really hard to see just how they're going to be able to pull this off, not doing vaccinations in Japan until mid-February, hoping that all 125 million residents can get vaccinated or, or a high percentage of that. The hill is very high to climb right now. But again, it really comes down to the dollars. They are going to try to make this work because the alternative is either just canceling these Olympics, possibly pushing them to 2022, or just resubmitting and trying to get the Olympics of 2032, which is something that the organizers have been thinking about. You know, the athletes train uh, years for these games, and, and many have a, a small window of peak performance. What mm -hmm. is all of this doing for morale in the Olympic sporting world? Well, that, that's the other variable that comes into it. You look here in the States, someone like Simone Biles, who has a very short lifespan for her gymnastics career to be at the top of her game. And those years are precious to her, not only for performance uh, during the actual event, during the Olympics, but what it can mean for her going forward, millions of dollars potentially in endorsement deals. But when you just look at the run-of-the-mill competitors, right now, them being in flux really affects their training, affects what events they may be trying to enter into. It affects when they might be able to travel to the games. There's been some talk about limiting when they could actually arrive to the games and when they would have to leave right after. So whether these games go off or not, the actual Olympic experience, which is something that a lot of athletes treasure, is going to be unlike anything that any athlete has experienced before and hopefully moving forward. And part of that experience, of course, is competing in front of those large international crowds. It's just not the same with the empty stadiums if that happens. No, not, a, not at all. And, and, and the priority should be if they want to get these games off is how do you keep the residents of uh, Japan safe, you know, whether that be from vaccinations? How do you keep the athletes safe? And I think something that should be pushed way back into the back burner is having visitors come. That is just a variable that you cannot control. Now, I know that, you know, you're obviously wanting to have these athletes perform in front of their fans. Possibly the, the athletes want to have their families come. But that's a variable that they could control pretty easily in terms of just saying no fans coming in. We don't have to have the variable of fans quarantining? Are they coming with vaccinations? Are they coming from countries where the, the rates are much higher than other parts of the world? We really don't know what the vaccination rollout is going to be in other parts of the country. So I think that's really one of the variables uh, that, again, these athletes and the organizers need to think about. How much say does the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, get in all of this? The say that they have is, is that they're pushing forward and saying that the event will be going on. There's two entities that are going on. There's the, the Japanese Olympic Authority, and then there's the IOC. The IOC is the authority, and it's actually in their charter and in their bylaws, that the games really can't be postponed much longer than one year. So it's really going to be up to them to say, do we want to postpone these games? Can they move forward? And if they can't, do we push to 2022? Now, the thing to keep in mind is that in 2022, there's the Winter Olympics. And up until just until 1994, the Winter and the Summer Olympics took place in the same year. They've now staggered them, so there's every two years. So that's going to be a consideration to, to come into play. Again, it really comes down to the IOC is the one that makes this final call. Right now, they're pushing forward with these games because, again, looking at those billions of dollars on the line, and they just want to keep the continuity of the Olympics alive.